I just finished up the videos for uh, linear independence and basis, bases for subspaces, and those are not fun. Uh, I'll let you know. So many, so many of them involve reducing sets of vectors with a bunch of unknown variables in them, which I hate. Yeah, it was it was not a fun experience. I, I made a lot of row reduction errors, but here we are. This is a much this is a much more fun and visual topic, which is great. We're talking about subspaces of R n, and uh, th these are the most tame subspace questions you can get, uh, especially the ones where you're given you're given something like this just to to pick which ones out of out of a couple options are subspaces, and let's uh, let's just go over quickly. And 16 is actually perfect for this. What properties we actually have to fulfill for a set to be considered a subspace? So, uh, as B is saying, we have to contain the zero vector. We have to be closed under vector addition, meaning that if we take any two elements of our set and add them together, we will still end up with another element of our set. And then uh, D, we have to be closed under scalar multiplication. So multiplying any uh, vector by a constant, it could be, it could also be zero. That's why including the zero vector is important. Uh, multiplying any vector by a constant will uh, give us another element of that set. So let's figure out what is up with question 16. We have the set of all vectors x, y such that uh, x multiplied by y, don't really like how they have a dot there and then I'm talking about the dot product uh, because let's be clear this is has nothing to do with something being a subspace. So x multiplied by y must be greater than or equal to zero. Well when will that occur? That will occur whenever x and y are greater than zero and whenever x and y are both less than zero. If we multiply any two values here and here we'll end up with uh, x times y will be less than zero, so that will not fulfill our criteria. But let's see, what if we take, if we know that we're dealing with quadrants one and three, what if we take two vectors, let's take a vector here and a vector here and add them together. Where are we gonna end up? Well, it's not gonna be as big a vector, but it will end up in one of the forbidden uh, quadrants. And so we can escape, we can escape our set here through vector addition. 10, let's consider this linear system. Uh, <laughs> this is the last time I get to talk about this question. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not actually that funny. Uh, suppose that the solution set of this system is a linear subspace of R3. Which of the following conditions must hold? So there are really just two things to uh, that kind of have to come to mind for this question. You have to remember that ax equals zero is is like one of one of our one of our major four subspaces. That's the null space, uh, and it is a subspace of the number of columns that uh, our matrix A has. So it's a subspace. If A is m by n, it's a subspace of R n. And since in this case n is three, we know that for sure this will be a subspace if this is the zero vector over here. Uh, so if B is equal to zero. That works. And you know, this is a perfect example of how this kind of this class can try to make you do a bunch of work that you really, really don't need to do. Um, yeah, you don't need to think about what would happen if, if A is equal to zero and B is equal to zero. Just 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 don't do it. Just uh, you know, in this case, just find the null space, but try to find something that makes sense. Because a lot of these options just they don't make much sense, uh, but they, they feel like they could be right, which is the scary part. Okay, eight. Consider the following subsets of the vector space R four, which are subspaces of R four. So take a look at two. Does two include the zero vector? Well, this position right here can never be zero, so no. This guy does not include the zero vector. What about three? Well, that's just the solution uh, solution of a x equals zero, and we know that um, this set will be a subspace of r to the number of columns that we have, and we're looking for a subspace of r four. So this is this is perfectly fine here. What about one? The set of all elements in this form here. Well, this is just the span 
of the vector 2, 3, negative 1, 5. And since we know that anything that we can write as a span is a subspace, we could just we could just write that off and say, yep, this is this is perfectly fine. Uh, but let's make sure. So does this include the zero vector? Uh, yep, it does. Uh, we can set x to zero and we'll have zero, 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 zero. Is it closed under vector addition? Well, it's just a line in uh, four dimensions that passes through the origin. And just like a line in two dimensions or three dimensions, if you take a, a value, a vector on that line and another vector on that line and add them together, you will still be uh, on that line. And then, you know, it goes to infinity in both directions. So take any element along that line and multiply it by whatever constant you want, you will still be on that line. So that this guy is also good. So one and three is correct. Which of the following sets of vectors x, y, z are subspaces of R3? Okay, so the things that we are looking for here, uh, points at the origin, lines that pass through the origin, planes that pass through the origin, or uh, literally all of R3. That would also, that would also be okay. So two is a plane through the origin. Three is a point at the origin. What's going on with one? Let's graph out one. So it says x times y times z is equal to zero is the condition for this. Well, for that, either x, y, or z, or multiple have to be equal to zero. So we will get the x, y plane, the x, z plane, the uh, y, z plane, and then the x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, and the origin. So it includes the origin, and it's closed under scalar multiplication. If you take any vector in, in one of these planes and multiply them by some constant, you'll still be in the plane. But let's take a vector in two opposing planes and add them together, and you'll get a vector that kind of pops out of the page at you in the first octant here, uh, which clearly, which clearly is not part of the set because we will have a non-zero value for x, y, and z. So this condition will not be met. The vector addition is our problem there. What about number four? Well, this is not this is not a plane through the origin. If you plug in zero, zero, zero to see if we have if this set includes the zero vector, you will see that zero does not equal one. So this is inconsistent, and so this guy does not have uh, the zero vector. So it is not a uh, correct answer. And then what about what about four? We have all vectors all vectors satisfying the condition x equals y. Well, what's that going to look like? Uh, that's just going to be. I've kind of messed up my perspective here. It's it's not it's not going to look too great. But it's a plane. It's a plane that is unbounded on z. So it it, it just goes goes wherever it wants on z. But uh, yeah, or you could you could also draw it as x y. So we have the the line x y, but then it's coming up out of the page at you and going down uh, infinitely along the the z axis. So because that's another plane through the origin, it will be uh, expressible as a span. So it is a uh, subspace of R three as well. So two three and five, two three and five is our correct answer. 18, which of the following subsets of the vector space R3 are subspaces of R3? We're getting pretty used to this. This is just literally the same thing that we had right here. X, Y, Z is equal to zero is the same thing as uh, two X, Y, Z is equal to zero. So it is not a subspace for the exact same reason because it's not closed under vector addition. What about two, the set of all solutions to this equation here? Well, that's a plane through the origin because this thing's equal to zero over here. So, yep, that works. We can express it as a span. Uh, this solution set for AX equals zero will be a subspace of the number of columns of this matrix A. And since we have three columns, yep, that's a subspace of R3. And then four, what about, what about this thing? Well, this is a plane, but it's not a plane through the origin. It doesn't include the zero vector. Zero plus zero is equal to zero plus one. No, that's, that's not true. So we don't include the zero vector. And two and three, is our correct answer. Wow, and that's actually it. So yeah, the, the things to take away here, uh, if you want to do these kind of questions quickly, remember point at the origin, line through the origin, plane through the origin, or all 
of uh, all of R3. And you will you can even run into some weirder ones where it's like a three-dimensional space within R4, but that's still legal. Just fall back on the three rules. And, you know, these questions are pretty good practice for, for getting used to. Uh, if you just look at look at the option, you should be able to, to visualize or remember back to uh, a previous example that was very similar. See, like this XYZ, it kind of looks different than this 2XYZ. You might think that th there's a different property going on. No, it's it's exactly the same thing. Uh, and some of these you can just commit to memory and it, it becomes a lot easier and faster in the future. So there we go. We're, we're done with that.